another minute or two. Good to see you. Okay. All right. Looks like we are live. Welcome everyone. I know Jessica's session's running over. So she, uh, you know, anybody who wants to finish up Jessica, what Jessica was talking about, that will be on demand. So I'm going to let everybody in here and we can get our networking session started. Great. Excellent. Okay, so good. So um, I hope you've all had a good start to the day so far. And if you're just joining us for one of these networking sessions, um, as you know, you've got two options for the next half hour. So you can choose to join us in the Zoom link here in Swapcard for a great chat with two agency executives who I'm gonna get to in just a second. Uh, we'll be exploring how experiential agencies are a great place to have a career in events and they are ready to take your questions as well. And the other way to uh, use your 30 minute networking break is to set up some five minute speed networking meetings with fellow attendees here on the platform. So this is a great low commitment way to meet new people as we said. So there's that how to document on this bottom of this page if you'd like to do that today as well. Um, with that, I'd like to introduce our two uh, panelists here today, Martha Yakian, Vice President of Strategic Accounts at Sparks. Hey, Martha. Hi. Thanks for being here. Good to and, see everybody. And Marcus Gilmore, Associate Experiential Producer at Momentum. Hi, Marcus. Hey, what's going on? Hey, everyone. Excellent. Okay, so I'm admitting a few more people here. We have a good group. Everybody just Thank stay you. muted, please. Okay, so um, Martha, Marcus, let's just first talk about your companies and your roles um, and what they entail. And Martha, maybe you could kick us off. Sure, um, uh, VP of Strategic Accounts at uh, Sparks. Uh, I've been in there for 22 years. Um, we do uh, some amazing work for some great brands um, and uh, you know, excited to talk to you all today. Yeah, Marcus. Hey everyone, my name is Marcus Gilmore. I am an associate experiential producer over at Momentum Worldwide, uh, where we focus on just building the total brand experiences, experience for uh, our clients in uh, sports, music, and tech, as well as shopper experience. Excellent. All right, so you know we, we always say this, it's a little bit cliche, but uh, you know, no two paths into events are the same. Mm -hmm. So tell us about yours, yeah. who'd like to start. Um, I'll go ahead and start. Right. Um, I I just make sure you're muted too. If anybody just popped in, I'll try to mute whoever's whoever's not. Let's see. Okay, good. Sure. So I started my career 24 years ago. Um, I was a summer intern at Giltsbury. It was in a, a, an exhibit firm back when. And um, my stepdad was actually the, the head of sales there. And so when I was um, going to school, I thought, oh, well, I'll go check it out. And I um, I immediately fell in love with the industry and um, became a lifer. So, um, you know, shortly after that, I uh, finished up school and I decided to, I didn't want to go and ask my dad for, for work. So I, um, so I went to the competitor um, and I've been there ever since. Um, I, as I mentioned before, I'll, I'll be celebrating my 22nd um, work anniversary at Sparks and uh, the rest is history. Yeah, Marcus? Great. Uh, so I, I actually found my love for media and advertising at the age of 10. Um, at that time, I was working, I was really volunteering at my church for our media, our media um, industry or ministry. And uh, when I got to college, I, I fell in love with television. Um, and then I had the opportunity to work for a guy named Tom Joyner, as well as NBC5 uh, for about three years. Um, and then there was this opportunity to join the Verizon Ad Fellows uh, program, which is an eight month rotational where you get to work at uh, four different agencies or brands. And I took that opportunity. Uh, um, and during that, um, that rotation, I worked at Weber Shanwick, Verizon, uh, Momentum Worldwide and VM1. Um, and then my last rotation was at Momentum. The first project during the rotation was Super Bowl, uh, not Super Bowl, but NBA draft. And I was like, this is the place for me. And so uh, they hired me to come on and I have moved up a few times uh, at Momentum. And uh, it's been a great experience. I've learned a lot. I learned fast. Um, and I think that's one of the great qualities of working at an agency. Mm, yeah, I love that. Two, two different stories and there's never, <laughs> never one 
one that's the same. Um, so just tell me, and Marcus, you could go ahead and kick us off here, but what, what do you like most about the work that you do um, on the experiential agency side of the industry? Yeah, like I said, I mean, the speed, right? There's one, there's a month that I could be working on a food truck pop-up. And then the next week I could work on an art installation for a spirit brand. And then I can work on a, a large tent pole event like a uh, New York auto show or uh, Super Bowl. And, and just those, those moments where it's small, large, small, large. Um, and it, it's allowed me to um, understand processes and being able to collaborate across teams, right? So I get to work with our creative design team, our business team, and even um, uh, just even our um, our data team as well. So just that mixture of collaboration is really helpful. Mm, definitely have to be a team oriented person, right? To be uh, successful in this industry. Martha, how about you? I think the the most um, meaningful thing that we do um, is the human connections, right? We build human connections, and you know I love innovating with our customers. We're doing things you know that have never been done before. We're really kind of stretching the limits of of what we do for experiential, and um, you know I think there this time has has brought on a, a different phase for us um, where we're where, you know, we're looking inside and and also kind of thinking about how we connect the brand um, emotionally um, in a big way. And so I think that, um, you know, we build more meaningful and thoughtful connections. And now we're also talking a lot about the brand and how, um, what that brand represents. Um, and, uh, you know, building those shared values all of a sudden just generates this amazing um, following and uh, brand evangelism. So it, uh, that's exciting. I think that that's the most meaningful part of of what do we what we do here at Sparks? Yeah, so it sounds like on the agency side, it's two things. You know, you get to do uh, work with a variety of clients on a variety of projects, which is always exciting. And then it's also maybe you've got some longer term clients that you can really help strategize. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, their brand and their message and their platform. Um, you know, long term, which is very interesting. Yeah, and be a part of that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah, and Martha touched on it, right? Like you, you can have that long-standing relationship with the client, and and you can push them a little bit. You can get them to try new things because you're building that trust uh, month over month as they continue to work with you. And I think that um, that's really key in just in in growth and creating experiences is that you're building trust each time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have a few more questions too, but be sure to pop your questions into the chat for Martha and Marcus and I'll get to them. So thanks. Thank you all. Uh, so let's talk about a, a typical day, uh, a day in the life of, uh, in your role. Who'd like to start? You go, you want to go ahead with this, Marcus? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, actually the, the day to day has changed, right. Working from home. Um, I, I've kind of found a way to just make sure I insert the things that make me happy during the day uh, along with the work. Um, so if that's, you know, starting my day, making sure I have my breakfast, my coffee, get my morning stretches in, like, I feel like that's really important because we're sitting either from the couch to the desk, you know, we're just going back and forth, right? So uh, those things that make me happy, I really have to do. Um, and also taking those quality breaks, but it's really those meetings with the clients, checking in as well as, um, I've really started inserting, uh, just learning new skills during the day. So I take an hour out to either learn something on LinkedIn um, in their learning platform, or uh, actually uh, front office sports has an experiential program right now that's free. You can download or you can participate in. Uh, it's hosted by Pepsi and they're just talking about their, um, how they experience, how they set up their marketing for experiential. And so it's free, right? Like that's, a, and you get a free kind of badge that says you completed their course. So I've been doing that. Um, you know, that's, those are those things. Like I have to learn on my own, right? And I think that that's one thing I've added to my day-to-day. -day. Um, and any follow-ups with clients or if there's a project in the work, I'm having those day-to-day -day conversations as well. 
Yeah, Marcus, I, I, I agree with you wholeheartedly. I think the, the setting up a routine of just kind of self-care um, is yeah. super critical, um, you know, working at home. Um, you know, I have a family, I have kids and a dog, a new puppy that's just taking over our world in, in a great way. But it, it certainly, um, you know, presents a, a whole set of new parameters of, you know, just making sure you take time for yourself, take time to really kind of... Um, uh, honor your, your, your soul and your, your own self. Um, and, um, and, you know, absolutely customer, um, engagements of, of contacting everybody, checking in on people, I think getting back to, you know, our humanity of checking in and making sure everybody around us is, is feeling well and doing well. So yeah. that's, that's yeah, much, I've... much more of my routine these days of, of, um, just pulse checks. Is everybody okay um, in my team and, and, you know, on our clients and, and those folks that may be living alone in an apartment and not having a lot of interactions um, without being able to, to be out. So I know Marcus, you're, you're there. So, you know, it's great that you take the time to, to go for a walk and get out of your seat and, and fill your, fill your soul with the right stuff. Yeah. And, and, and one thing that I realized, you know, I was missing is that that conversation that I have at the, you know, in the kitchen or, you know, we have these things and momentum is called the blue couches. This, it like looks out into the water and, and faces mm -hmm. New Jersey. And a lot of people kind of congregate there. And so I had to, I started like sending, you know, small invites of the group of people that I would hang out with and say, hey, let's just connect or let's, you know, not the happy hour style, but really just 20 minutes just to just talk to each other, right? And it's, it could be about whatever. Uh, and we have this thing where we say no work talk, right? Like, I don't want to talk about the clients and things like that. Or let's just talk about who you are as a person. And, you know, are you eating? Or did you take the dog out for a walk? Are you having fun just finding things to do? So um, I, I think that's part of important to your routine to to find that normalcy, uh, human interactions. Yeah. Yeah, Marcus, you mentioned uh, taking this opportunity, just the, the, the change that's been happening. I'm not going to say new normal. We're, we're just not going to talk about those. <laughs> I mentioned those cliches, but uh, um, and that got me thinking about, you know, where you, you both are finding inspiration these days. And, um, you know, because a lot of what you have to do is uh, ideating for clients. And so where, where are you? What are you looking to? What are you reading? What are you checking out um, in this time when we're not traveling and uh being influenced by culture and all those good stuff. Yeah, so um, it, it goes back to a routine, right? So every Tuesday and Thursday, I call it Twitch and YouTube Thursday, where I found videos or I go on, I go on Twitch on to uh, I go get on my TV and um, and I watch just different live streams or I'm watching YouTube content, whatever's the trending piece of content, I'm watching it. I'm just absorbing as much as possible. Uh, LinkedIn is still like the wild, wild west to me. There's still tons of articles. There are a lot of people who are writing now. I spend a lot of time, you know, posting things there as well. So those kind of things allow me to embrace new knowledge. Um, also reaching out to new vendors. Like if I see someone who's a cool VR um, designer, or if they know how to build certain things, I'm reaching out to them to say, hey, tell me about your, your company because this can be something that my client may need and we can work together. I think that's, that's the part that I need to continue to do. How do I find new places to advance my client? Um, and, and I take advantage of that if possible. Yeah, Martha, how about you? Um, yeah, similar, similar to markets, it's consuming a lot of content that's out there. I think there's so much amazing content out there that uh, it's available to us for free. Um, I think um, in the recent I've, um, you know, there's, there's been a lot of introspect of kind of searching on, on what has changed in our world. And there's so much that has changed. Um, and there's so much that we can do um, to uh, kind of improve our state of, of the world and, and the state of what we do um, for, our, for our clients. And so as experiential marketers, it's such an opportunity to, um, to really um, inspire that, that um, social responsibility. So, you know, thinking about sustainability, thinking about diversity and um, equity when we're when we're building our programs. So there's there's so much content out there right now that um, it's bringing 
so much life and light to, um, to social causes that I, I find that really inspiring. And I find that, that that's kind of what I'm leaning into a lot um, and how we help our brands connect in a more holistic way with their audiences and really build those memorable and, and um, <laughs> non-tangible, like it, it's very hard to, you know, to connect um, when we're all remote. Um, we're so, you know, we're humans. We love hugging. We love being around each other and, uh, you know, seeing each other, interacting with each other. So the more we can help bring that in and infuse it into our uh, digital world, um, I think it's, it's exciting. And, um, you know, that's, uh, there's, a, there's a lot to be inspired uh, about um, from, from some of the, the kind of content that's coming out. Mm-hmm. I love that view. Yeah. And so let's talk about um, some memorable programs you've worked on. You don't have to mention clients if you can't, but, um, and, and this could be pre COVID too. We're happy to take a walk <laughs> down memory lane <laughs> as well. Um, well, it, it, you know, that's a tough question because, you know, every, every program that we do is memorable in some way, shape or form, right? We all have stories. We have the, like the battleground stories of, of all the things that we've accomplished um, in our, in our work life. Um, I think that, uh, you know, it'd be hard to kind of pick one out, but I, I'm going to say I have one particular one and it, it's more to do with kind of my journey now and, and what I'm doing and, and, you know, the work that I'm, I'm doing now. Um, it was a sea level, uh, you know, event that we did uh, for Salesforce in collaboration with their partner, ABB. And it was at the uh, World Economic Forum. This, you know, it was a very short ramp up time. I think it was a 20 days to get it all done in and done and out. Um, so it was crazy, but um, you know, it was, it was all about emerging technologies, things that have never been seen done before. Um, you know, the, the demos were, you know, kind of seamlessly interconnecting the digital and, and real worlds. And um, you know, the event was, you know, obviously great food and beverage, great entertainment, um, beautiful view of, you know, the, the San Francisco Golden Gate Bridge. Um, but the reason why it's so important for me is really that it was the start of a journey with this client, um, with Salesforce. It was my first project that I did with them. And um, the journey has just been amazing. It's an adventure every day and, you know, working with people that you really truly love and love to collaborate with and feel like it's a family is really critical and important for me as in my career and where I am uh, as far as um, the stage in my life that, it, you know, it's, it's important for me to feel that it's meaningful work and it's, um, and, you know, as a company, it's inspiring to be able to kind of promote those, those social elements that are important to all of us um, in society. Yeah. Marcus. Yeah. So uh, I'll, I'll just pick one. I like Martha. It's really hard to choose one because there's so many great moments. Um, and, but I, I want to talk about the, the latest one that I, one of the largest ones that I've worked on, and that was uh, the Walmart movie drive-in. And um, it was over at over 160 stores for Walmart, right? And it was uh, from August to October. Uh, Drive-ins still have that nostalgia feel. We still want to see movies. And uh, Walmart uh, was a great partner for this. And and we are still continuing our partnership there. And uh, to promote their new feature, which was Walmart Plus. Um, And this was a moment where we all had to come together. But with with COVID, we had to change how we interact. Usually with brand ambassadors, we're very face-to-face, we're talking every day, we're training on site, um, but it had to be different, right? It had to, we had to change our user experience, changing how consumers interact with the brand. And that was really key. And that started actually in the creative room. How, how do we have consumers interact with and still get the idea, still answer the RFP, right? Like, how do we do that? And so being able to, to create this Walmart drive-in experience and bring out celebrities and show films that people want to see, it was amazing. And uh, again, we went across the, really across the US with touching a lot of Walmart stores. Um, and, and like some of you maybe have, you grew up in a small town like I did or went to college in a small town, Walmart was the only thing <laughs> in the area. And so you would just go to Walmart randomly just to get out of the house or leave your dorm. So um, at that time, so I I think that it was really special. 
Um, and, and I think that's one of those moments people are going to remember from an experience moment. Yeah. So um, we, we talked a little bit about uh, the typical day um, and how it's evolved, but, you know, let's talk about, uh, you know, the skill sets, um, the conversations that you're having in the wake of COVID. And we, before everybody hopped on, we kind of talked about how those conversations have even shifted in nine, 10 months so much. Like we've, we've learned so much over this last year and the conversations have shifted because of that. But tell me first about new skills that you're developing on your team or that you're developing personally. And then let's talk about just the, the shifts that you're seeing um, in the work that you're doing. Yeah, from from an we'll start experiential with you, Marcus. team. Like, <laughs> Sorry, yeah. So, uh, specifically on our experiential production team, we have really dialed in on developing virtual events, and not only virtual but hybrid, right? So we we're learning how to build outside, and then how do we revert that back to being a virtual moment? How do we serve it across digital um, and and make sure it's three hundred and sixty like we have done before. Um, and so that's one skill that skill set that we have all uh, really, really are honing in on, and that's just being able to build that virtual aspect. Also, understanding from a content standpoint, how do we we feature um, our clients from a content standpoint, but still have that experiential build to it, where consumers can interact. Um, and so I think that that's going to be like those, especially on our team, like two things that we have to continue to work on. Um, and then we've, we've kind of built out our uh, COVID protocol as well. And we've worked with new vendors who um, specialize in COVID protocol, um, especially once we start going back to doing live experiences, making sure that uh, we're following all of our rules as a company, as well as uh, what the CDC recommends as well. So uh, those are the kind of the three points from a team perspective, what we're doing. Yeah, Martha? Yeah, similar, you know, very similar, Marcus. I think, um, you know, we have, um, you know, reskilled a lot of our workforce. You know, we were an agency that was focused um, heavily on live um, production and uh, events. So, we, you know, we had an amazing creative technology team um, that had been doing digital all along. Um, but the demand just completely increased um, overnight. And so, of course, you know, we took our um, event workforce and rescaled them to be able to deliver on digital um, programs. And that was a really exciting time for us. It was an exciting time for growth. Um, you know, it, it, it moved fast and the conversations um, evolved quickly. I mean, it was, we're no longer looking at um, backwards. It's, it's not about, um, you know, where we were uh, as much as we love and cherish, you know, all the, the experiences that we've developed over time, because that's built our brand and it's built our company and our, um, and our vision. Um, but it's really a forward view of, of what's next. And, and so we're innovating, we're, we're changing the game. We're not, um, you know, the conversations are about anywhere, anytime um, for it you know, for, for the user. And it's no longer like, I'm going to take you to a certain place at a certain moment in time. It's, you know, it's having to adapt to our current work lives, right? We're all in the same place. Um, you know, we're all at home and dealing with, you know, different factors and, uh, you know, things that are happening in our environment. Um, so just being able to um, adapt um, and uh, the conversations have led to, um, you know, what can we do completely different? Like, you know, is it taking, you know, um, XR uh, production quality uh, filming to, you know, for content to creating more memorable, um, very personalized, hyper-personalized, customized experiences for, for um, guests? Um, and so it's um, always trying to remember where we've been, but evolving it to become um, something much more connected um, than before. Um, and I think that's, you know, people are, are hungry for that um, and um, less of, of what we used to do. So it's, it's exciting. Change is good. Yeah, change is good. And I, I like to say that we're taking chances, right? Companies are taking chances. Brands are taking chances. Consumers are taking chances on experiencing new things, right? They're okay with how uh, uh, an idea may be presented. And uh, 
Uh, we did that with Super Bowl this year with building a 5G, you know, dome with Fortnite inside of the game. Like we had a creator, we had a, a team of creators build inside of Fortnite. And so that's a chance, right? A lot of companies won't take that opportunity or, you know, uh, but we did. And, and I think that that's what it's about right now, taking the opportunity. Absolutely. And I think not being afraid to get scrappy too. I think we all forgot, you know, yep. we were moving in such a high paced, high quality, um, you know, world that it, it was good to come back to our roots and kind of figure out where we were before and, and build on that with new technologies, new processes that are, um, you know, have evolved and, and that giving us the opportunity to really connect in different ways. Um, it's, it's, it's quite a unique time. And I think it's exciting. I love what you said about we're no longer looking back and what a weight that takes off, you know, your shoulders right. to just say it's, we got to roll with the change, you know? Yeah. yeah. The change is here and, and um, you know, change is good. I think uh, a lot of times we, we get hung up on our, on our, you know, comfort blanket. What's that security blanket that we carried when we were kids and um, nothing like ripping off the bandaid quick. <laughs> so that, that did, certainly did it for, for a lot of us when, um, when COVID hit. And so it's, um, it's certainly um, a, a great life, life-changing experience to be part of it. Yeah. Um, and we had a question here from Brianne, which Marcus, you answered, but for the folks, folks looking at the stream, I'll answer it out loud for them. They had mentioned platforms that uh, Marcus, you had been looking into for continuing ed and just brushing up on new skills. And uh, you mentioned front office sports as one, LinkedIn as another great platform. Um, and I thought maybe we could just take a few seconds to talk about if, if people are wanting to kind of dig in to the industry a bit more, what are some great sites that you check out every day? Um, uh, maybe uh, blogs that you read, um, anything that you can just offer that they should be putting into their reading list every day? or maybe even a good book. <laughs> and I don't put you on the spot here, but <laughs> I certainly, that. I certainly recommend the, the um, world economic forum. They have mm -hmm. some great pieces that come out um, on all kinds of topics. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of, like you said, on LinkedIn, there's tons of, of information out there. Um, if uh, equity diversity uh, is, is something that's up your alley, there's, there's some great resources there, um, you know, and just really um, learn and read and um, immerse yourself. There's so kind of the, the amount of information and content is endless. Um, I can't say that I have a favorite. It's just, you, you know, it, every, it's a unique experience for each individual and it's really up, up to that individual and what, what's important. What are those, what are those things that, that make you tick? Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't have a particular website or anything like that. I mean, I'm looking at Ad Age, I'm on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. uh, I have tons and tons of podcasts. What I would say is that um, check out things that resonate with you because you're the reason you're up. Let me take a step back. When you're on these teams and you're going at your companies, you're supposed to bring yourself to work. They want they hired you because of your outside knowledge as well. Not only what can you do with the job, but for me, like I love sports and music and tech. So I can tell you about all the high school basketball players that are coming out or who are in their first year of college. And I can talk about those things. And that's what I immerse myself in. So when it's time for, when they look for that uh, category speaker for the team or an idea, I can represent there. And so I just consume all the things that I love and um, it allows me to understand what's going on in the industry as well. Um, and I just apply that, but um, yeah, that, that's what I would recommend from my end. Yeah. Good. And to, to wrap things up, I thought we, we've kind of touched a little bit about on the opportunities in the industry when we talked about your roles and uh, what you guys are talking about every day, but, you know, just tell me, despite, you know, we're looking past the challenges, right? It's a new, it's a new dawn. It's a new year. So tell me about where you see opportunity. What's fueling the fire for experiential, so to speak. I think people talk about virtual, uh, they're, they, it's almost like it feels they're feeling tired to talk about it, but there could be some exciting things on the horizon when combining virtual with, with live. And so just tell me about what's on your minds as we, as we progress into 2021. Yeah, Martha mentioned it. Uh, you know, we were very hybrid, but also we're the consumers are on demand, right? The consumer is gonna gonna 
take on whatever you're putting out when they get into that space. Uh, we, it's very few people who are saying, all right, it starts at seven, I'm gonna be there at seven. More people are like, oh, well, is it recorded? That's the first thing a lot of people ask. Is it recorded? Can I catch it when I want to? And so being able to understand that and how you market your, your experience from that standpoint, to know that the consumer is, has all the control now, right? We, they choose when they want to consume. And so um, does your idea have a lasting impact? Um, I, again, I think that there are going to continue to be moments where we are going to have live experiences um, and there's subtle moments like with, within sports and music, you see a lot of the virtual concerts now. And, and at the same time, again, consumers, you know, consume that when they want to. Customers consume that when they want to. So um, I, I think that the opportunity with hybrid is, is endless. It really is. I agree with you. It's everywhere. Um, I think the, yes. the core of nurturing human connections is what we do. And what's really changed is just the vehicle that we deliver that in. That vehicle has evolved. It's grown wings. It wants to go anywhere and everywhere. Um, and so, you know, being able to really kind of deliver on that, um, that kind of anywhere, everywhere at the time that you want to consume it is really critical. And I think that's, that's where I see our, you know, world uh, evolving to, um, you know, hyper personalized, hyper customized. It's about the user. It's about when and how they feel most comfortable consuming your content and making sure that th that content is meeting them um, emotionally and, as well as in the business aspect. Um, those things are connected. They're not disconnected from each other. And so, you know, I think um, the, the great uh challenge that we have is now having the ability to integrate those things that we've never integrated before in our business strategies, you know, be more equitable, being more sustainable, you know, those are things that are so top of mind and uh, for so many companies um, that, you know, we now have the power and the time to make that change because we're no longer kind of strapped to our, to our ways. We, you know, it was like that, that break and that, um, a uh, quick, uh, like I said, rip off the Band-Aid um, reality of, of change. And, uh, you know, what we knew as human connections in the person have now evolved to digital. So, of course, you know, there's going to be hybrid. I don't think digital is going away in any time <laughs> soon or ever. It's, if anything, we're going to blur the lines and we're going to have um, experiences that really connect us, um, but it connects us uh, in a more humane way. Um, and I think that that's the, the vision that I see um, in our future and, and that the opportunities are endless, really. Um, it's what you make of them. And it's, uh, you know, that saying of, of uh, you know, making, you know, a, an amazing meal out of simple ingredients. Um, it's, it's, that, it's that same vision, um, just in a, in a digital slash live way. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, when we, when we conduct interviews with uh, brand side marketers, uh, they almost always talk about the importance of their partnerships with their agency, um, with their agencies. And so it's great to, to kind of pick your brains and get your perspectives on what's going on and your roles and what it's like working for an agency. So I really appreciate your time, Martha. Thank you, Rachel. We appreciate it um, to be included and, um, you know, I'm happy to help answer any other questions um, you guys have. Okay. And Marcus, thank you. Of course, of course. Yeah, uh, anyone that's joined, please add me on LinkedIn, send me a message um, and we can you know, connect offline or on, um, or uh, what's the, yes. Yeah, they LinkedIn. can connect and swap card too. They could message you. That's what on, I was trying to say, platform. swap card. Yeah. Connect with me and swap card as well. All right, excellent. All right, thank you both. Thanks everybody for joining. Thanks, I appreciate it. Good to see your faces. Okay, bye-bye.